Over 60% of Americans own stock in 2023. That's according to a Gallup poll. If you're part of the minority that does not, it may seem a bit intimidating to start, but if you're already trading, are you sure that you're setting your investments up for success? To break down how new and old traders can trade smarter, we've got Adel Zaman, who is the Wall Street Alliance Group partner here in studio with us. Great to see you. Great to see you, Brad. All right, so first and foremost, let's just get to some do's and don'ts of, for first timers out there and perhaps for some who have been involved in the equity markets but have already made some unfortunate mistakes. Yeah, I think one of the basic principles is always invest for the long term, right? So with all this meme stock frenzy and with Robinhood traders you know, coming in, we tend to see a lot of people are looking for short term trading. I think that's a mistake. You know, Most people lose money that way. Have a long term time horizon. The S&P 500, there's never been a 20 year period where the S&P 500 has generated a negative return, right? Uh, the 20 year average return of the S&P 500 is a, a more than 9%. In order to make that return, you have to stay invested for the longer period of time. In fact, we tell clients, if you, don't want, if you can't invest for five years, you shouldn't be investing in the market. Interesting, okay, and so what are some good first trades for first timers, perhaps? I think that you know, uh, if, if, you're, if you're investing for the first time, uh, it makes sense to look at ETFs. Mm -hmm. you know, th that's an that's a easy way to diversify. A basket of securities. A basket, you know, rather than going for individual stocks because that can be risky. Sure. Get a feel for the market with ETFs and then you know, dip your toes more with individual stocks later. What are some of the strongest themes that you're seeing in, in tracking within ETFs at this juncture? I think that you know, with ETFs, you know, the index ETFs, they 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 are a great place to start. Start with S and P 500 index ETF, um, and then as the size of your portfolio grows, you can have more individual stocks and create a more diversified basket. I think one of the key things, Brad, that people miss out. It's boring, mm. but you know, if you're starting off, always remember be diversified, right? When the tech bubble burst, a lot of people lost their shirts because they were heavily invested in technology and they never recovered their money, right? On the other hand, people that were well diversified, you know, they recovered and they've made more money over time as the market went up. And you know, another mistake that we see people make is that you know, if the market's down, you know, they'll say that my 401k, I'm not even gonna take a look at it. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna come back up. That's a mistake because the market may recover, but what you're invested in may never come back up. So you wanna make sure you're diversified properly to recover with the market. Is there a way to take advantage of downturns or drawbacks in the market? Well, like Warren Buffett said, be greedy when others are fearful, right? Mm -hmm. Market drawdowns are sometimes the best opportunities, right? It's not only the best opportunity to buy good quality companies at 20, 30% discounts, but it's also a good opportunity to implement certain strategies such as tax loss harvesting. You know, what is tax loss harvesting? Tax loss harvesting is that if you have a stock in your portfolio that's down, you sell it, you know, as long as you don't buy it back within 30 days before and after you've sold it, you could take that loss to offset capital gains in stocks and in real estate. And what a lot of people miss out on, Brad, and don't understand is that this loss can get carried forward indefinitely into future years. So we used this strategy extensively in 2008. After that, you know, the markets and the real estate went up and clients were able to use those losses to offset those gains. We're going into a fresh earnings season. What do new investors need to remember about earnings season generally here and, and how they can aptly trade during that time as well? I would say, you know, if you're a new investor, don't really worry about, you know, the short term earnings. You know, think about it from a long term point of view. If you're a new investor, if you know, don't be afraid to sell a stock if it's down. Mm. You know, sometimes it makes sense to put a bullet in it and put the money into something else which will which will go go higher, right? Which has a greater likelihood of going higher. Another mistake that we see that people tend to make is that they don't want to book profits, right? Like for example, if you pull up, pull up the five year charge chart of Tesla, right. you will see that the stock had a monster rally up until November first of twenty twenty one. And since then, it's down more than 50%, right? We're seeing, seeing something similar play out with NVIDIA where people don't want to sell it. It's, it's gone up. You don't want to take any money off the table. That's a mistake. Book profits. Take some money off the table. No individual stock should be more than 5% of your portfolio. Interesting. Adil, great to have you. Great to see you again. Adil Zaman, who is the Wall Street Alliance Group partner. Thanks. Thank you.